so conditioning will start again here in the last class i had already introduced conditioning and independent and dependent event is it clear to everyone or should i recall it i think it might be clear to everyone if uh, happening of one doesn't affect affect the happening of other then simply you call those two event happen to be independent that means conditional probability of a given b is equal to probability of a that means b is occur occurring first that one is not going to affect the occurrence of a it is the probability is same so that's why you are saying that a and b are independent and vice versa also you can say now we are talking about conditioning from the random variable perspective okay and it is uh, it is one kind of tool uh, through which you will able to compute uh, various kind of uh, probability mass function similar to what we had seen three application of conditional probability in uh, module 1 the first one was a multiplication rule and that will change here in random variable uh, joint probability mass function Multi multiplication rule we had seen multiplication rule in short i will call mr and here it will change to computation of joint probability mass function in discrete random variable okay the sec the second application we had seen uh, total probability to compute probability of an event total probability law total probability law we had seen okay in conditional as an application second application of conditional probability and this will be here also a uh, total probability law here it, it will be also a total probability law in case of compute Uh, to compute probability of uh, probability mass function for a given value okay so, uh, this would be also total probability law here itself it would be then third application was bayes rule and here it would be also bayes rule as, as it is bayes rule for uh, discrete random variable so we had seen three application of conditional probability and same will come here in conditional Uh, probability mass function bayes rule we had seen and same here it also it would be so all these we had seen here in module 1 that it means basic probability that with respect to event kind of thing what we had discussed basic probability you can simply say okay now here everything we are trying to see from the random variable perspective so little bit changes would be there but uh, things are same little bit changes that everything we try to see from the random number perspective that numeric things are coming here and numeric uh, numeric means uh, uh, it is very easy to do uh, do in computer it is all kind of computational things so we can do all those things in computer or uh, calculator or something like that what we call it computing machine is there so based on that okay so we will talk about conditional probability mass function of a discrete random variable x and here we uh, what is happening that conditioning we introduced by another random variable y that means we observe y some value of y we have already observed based on that we will try to compute uh, probability mass function of x if you are observing some value of y then based on that uh, what would be the uh, conditional probability mass function of x so that so it is one kind of conditional probability itself what it backbone is conditional probability so it is coming like this way so in definition of conditional probability i had told that uh, uh, conditioning means we are having partial information and suppose that we know that outcome is within some given event that partial event we call it uh, given event also and we wish to quantify likelihood of out occurrence of outcome a okay so there are two outcomes so there is a sequential uh, sequence of occurrence of outcome first here uh, b occurs and after that a is occurring so we are if uh, that is the scenario then we try to compute probability of a from the scenario of b and that we had computed that uh, probability of occurrence of a jointly with b divided by uh, yeah, normalized by probability of b that we had already told that so that one is a set theoretic approach event approach why not we convert in random variable perspective so if you replace a by uh, some 
association with a random variable x we call it a is equivalent that uh, we say that uh, a is an event so we can write that event in term of a random variable that x is observing value a small x okay and b is another event that is already occurred and uh, that one is we are quantifying it by another random variable y that means y is observing value uh, small y so this kind of quantification we are coming with okay so remember that a is here what it is an event and x x equal to a small x what does it talk about it is talking about a random number so the event has been mapped to random number under the random variable x the event a is mapped to random number small x under the random variable x and event b is mapped to uh, random number y under the random variable y and all are occurring in the same random experiment it is not like that two different random experiment in the same random experiment all these so in that scenario what kind of form is, uh, this conditional probability will take so it will we will write here probability measure that we will replace a by x is observing value a small x that random number x and b is replaced by y is observing value a small y in the left hand side okay then in right hand side we will see changes as well in term of x and y that random numbers so what does it talk about joint occurrence of a and b that means joint occurrence of the event x equal to a small x and the event y equal to a small y so here again we will write here probability measure that x is observing value a small x and y is observing value a small y everyone might be aware of and meaning of and means it is talking about joint occurrence it is not like that uh, one occurs then we will not worry about other it is talking about joint occurrence if or 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 it is there then you can talk about uh, union kind of things or something like that okay but if uh, you are talking about joint occurrence then we call it and approach or and uh, you can replace it by comma and comma means also it is talking about and so the numerator in the right hand side it becomes probability that x is observing value a small x and y is observing value a small y and the normalizing thing would be here uh, that y is observing value probability that y is observing value a small y so just we have changed the conditional probability from module 1 in term of uh, probability mass function in model 2 we come up with probability mass function in model 2 so what we denote it if you see it then we can say that it is talking about uh, here this one is given so this one is fixed and here x equal to a small x it is just we are observing one instant x is not exhausted here okay why we have y equal to a small y we have already observed but x equal to a small x various situation we will take it okay so that's why this will define probability mass function of x probability mass function of x a small p uh, of x probability we will read it probability mass function of uh, x given y or this line is conditioning line okay that means y is already occurred and after that we are observing occurrence of x so that meaning of meaning of this one okay and as it is a probability mass function and we are used to of writing suffix uh, random variable in suffix as well so we say that a no sorry x occurs after y here x given y also so it is not giving in computation this one is not just it is just for notation suffix just x given y just we read that conditioning thing is y is, is occurring first and x is occurring later so that it say okay and this one is so this complete thing this this is represented in term of probability measure or this one is we call it uh, probability mass function 
and here conditioning term is coming so we call it conditional probability mass function and in uh, left hand side this one and in right hand side what we will call this one we will call joint probability mass function that means value of joint probability mass function okay along the line uh, along the joint point this joint point okay so value of joint probability mass function at joint point a small x and a small y if you see in book uh, i have given plotting a lot of plotting you can find those plotting as well and remember that always put suffix in order to relate the corresponding random variable so it is a uh, bivariant kind of probability mass function so that's why uh, we will mention those random variable x and y here so those occurs jointly means uh, separated by comma x comma y and here this one is y so this one is the definition of conditional probability mass function we call it so if you talk about conditional probability mass this is conditional probability mass function then can we restate it in a so same thing what i have written here conditional probability mass function uh, as per if you look back to probability definition approach of probability mass function how we define probability mass function probability mass function we have defined p of x is what it is actually defined as probability that uh, x is observing random uh, random variable x is observing a value a small x that means p of x is actually capital p that x random variable x is observing value a small x okay so this of approach of defining probability mass function we had already uh, seen okay that means small p and here suffix we will put here same approach we will also introduce here in case of conditional probability mass function so conditional probability mass function of x given y how we will define we will define here, see here how we are defining that probability measure that x is observing uh, a value small x given y okay so right now we have just written in term of probability measure so we will explain it further this would be actually conditional probability that x is observing value small x given that y has already observed a value small y y has already observed a small y. okay so this one is simply conditional probability you can call this one is event a you can call this one is event p okay and from that scenario how you will define this conditional probability joint occurrence of a and b divided by or normalized by occurrence of b same thing okay and now we had already seen the joint probability mass function so we will write this one in term of this joint uh, value of joint probability mass function at joint point x y and this one is value of probability mass function at y okay so this one is the uh, definition of conditional probability all about that you have to understand all these so every time you have to do same process if you are willing to compute conditional probability mass function of a uh, random variable given another random variable is already occurred okay now if you talk about uh, this definition we will simplify here if you take this p of y uh, left hand side if you bring it here then what you will get probability of joint occurrence of x and y i am saying that probability of joint occurrence of x and y a small x and a small y okay joint so how we are computing probability of joint occurrence of a small x and a small y it is first we are observing y first so that's way probability of y into probability of x given y so that scenario this is also giving way to compute joint probability mass function joint probability mass function is difficult to compute in general unless involved events are independent in nature if independent in nature then you will be able to compute joint probability mass function but there is no independence in then it is very difficult to compute joint probability mass function so through this conditioning approach we are computing it okay and if someone is saying that no uh, why not if i say if i observe x first then you will compute first probability mass function of x okay and if you are observing x first then you will observe y so conditional probability mass function of y given x will come here all p here a small probability mass function of 
always you have to be a specific regarding notation uh, so that it will give clear meaning of notation but so this kind of things and in the suffix you can put uh, here you can leave it there is no issue but uh, for better understanding you should put it it is not very strong condition uh, you should put just for uh, basic understanding so everything will be clear so either is someone here x is observing first and y is observing later so that criteria is. so let us talk about uh, that uh, first application as uh, multiplication rule that it is equivalent to multiplication rule that means it is simply talking about computation of joint property mass function via multiplication rule and various problem we will see it here so conditional property mass function of uh, a discrete random variable x condition on an observation of other random variable y that means we simply say that event y is observing value a small y we we, def we are defining it like this way and we have restated it uh, in the multiplication rule like this way okay so the multiplication multiplication rule it can be generalized to compute joint property mass function of n jointly distributed random variable if you are having so you may raise a question in a single random experiment how can we define various uh, random variables we can define we can count uh, a number of tails if you are tossing coin n times you can define number of tails you can define number of heads you can define uh, some is uh, even odd something like that you can define various things you can define some is uh, okay uh, some is even some is odd the x plus y x minus y x by y various things you can define so various random variable is possible to define in a single random experiment okay so if uh, uh, in a s random experiment there are n number of uh, uh, random variables then how will define uh, joint property mass function of these n number of random variable how will compute it so it is just sequential order that means first we are observing x1 so we are computing property mass function of x1 then we are observing x2 so we are computing property mass function of x2 given x1 property mass function of x3 given x1 and x2 uh, likewise property mass function of x and given x1 x2 x2 uh, x2 x3 up to x and minus 1 it is a, it is just simply multiplication rule and again this may be very much complicated in later if you study marco chain marco process uh, then there you will see that there is very interesting uh, result is there in order to compute joint property mass function the much simpler that that mark thanks to marco property okay so first question i am taking in order to compute joint property mass function with the help of conditioning so here uh, professor may often in, has her fact wrongs and answer each of her students question incorrectly with probability 1 by 4 if one student is asking question then the professor may she answers uh, that question wrongly with probability 1 by 4 so what would be your success probability of success what is the success meaning here wrong answer by professor may that is the success so you have to define success as success as per your requirement of the question question okay so your probability of success that means a small p is given 1 by 4 and it would be independent of other questions in each lecture professor may is asked either zero question or one question or two questions with probability 1 by 3 that means professor may will be asked zero question with probability 1 by 3 one question with probability 1 by 3 two question with probability 1 by 3 that means number of question to be asked to professor may is uniformly distributed okay so we consider that x and y x is talking about number of questions professor may is asked and why is talking about number of questions he answer wrongly in a given lecture okay so we have to find joint property mass function of x and y so tell me what value x will take what value x will take 0 1 2 so x is observing three kind of value three value either it will take 0 or it will take 1 or it will take 2 likewise y will observe what possible values similar kind of value 0 1 2 
and here x is taking uh, all this value with equal probability 1 by 3 but we don't know what is the probability of y so if you are uh, you one question is hidden here that means you have to find the probability mass function of y as well so that one is very difficult task directly you will be not able to compute so in order to compute probability mass function of y you have to compute probability mass joint probability mass function of x and y then you will be able to compute joint pro, uh, probability mass function of y through marginalization so y is also observing 0 1 2 from the question we come to know okay all these and also we come to know that probability mass function of x that also we know okay so here situation is coming here like that so how we will compute first joint probability mass function this is the first question how many joint points would be there first you have to count how many joint point joint points are there 3 into 3 9 joint points are there 9 joint points are there so what are those uh, you can go for 0 0 and then 0 1 1 0 that kind of things also but just i have for simplicity i have computed a, in a very random way i have given. so what is the probability of pro joint probability mass function of 1 1 how you will compute joint probability mass function of 1 1 that means x equal to 1 y equal to 1 that means uh, your x you are observing first and y you are observing later what is p of x you should write here p, what is the p of x 1 by 3 p of x equal to 1 by 3 because it is already given this it is already given here it is 1 by 3 and now next time I, I will ask when this one is already given then also we can talk about what is the probability of y given x this from the question we can compute based on the value of x okay so here suppose x equal to 1 and y equal to 1 so simply p of uh, p of 1 or uh, this would be p of 1 given 1 y equal to 1 given x equal to 1 so what is value of p of 1 it is 1 by 3 this value is 1 with 1 by 3 and now I am asking what is value of uh, uh, p of 1 given 1 that means that is why this suffix notation is playing very important it is saying that uh, the first argue the argument is y and the given thing is x it is saying that so what would be value of this one if it is saying that one question has been asked then uh, what is the probability that that question would be wrong what would be that 1 by 4 the answer would be sorry what what is the probability that that, that answer would be wrong for the single asked question answer would be wrong so that would be 1 by 4 so joint probability of 1 1 would be 1 by 12 now question next what is the joint probability mass function of at point 1 0 that means one question has been asked okay so one question has been asked so this probability would be 1 by 3 now one question so what is the probability that zero wrong answer given that one question has been asked zero wrong answer that means what is the probability of wrong answer 1 by 4 then right answer 3 by 4. So that is where joint value of joint probability mass function is 1 by 3 into 3 by 4, 3 by 12 in total 3 by 12. So this is the way to, so we are computing it through multiplication rule or we call it uh, that uh, conditioning approach what we call it. Okay. So in that way also you can convert this one in layer wise. This one is the first layer. In the first layer you observe x in the second layer you observe y okay if zero question has been asked the how many zero how many wrong answer would be there how many wrong answer what is the probability of wrong answer 
probability of wrong answer I am asking. If zero question has been asked to professor may, then what is the probability of wrong answer? Think, think, think again. Zero question has been asked, then what is the probability of uh, being wrong answer from the professor may? Zero. Why Professor May will utter if zero question has been asked? If zero question has been asked, why Professor May will utter? Zero question has been asked. I am asking to compute probability of zero. Zero. Why Professor May will utter? If someone is not uttering, not saying anything, whether you will say that he is saying wrong? Can you assume that Professor, he is a professor, he sees a professor. So how will you say that she will be wrong by knowing and not anything? By default she is true, she has given right answer. That means if she is not uttering anything, she has given, what is the probability of 0 given 0? It is a certain thing, so no, nothing is coming, so simply probability 1 would be there. Probability of 0 given 0, it would be 1. 1 by, simply there is a certain event, she is not saying anything. That one is, there is no randomness simply, there is no randomness. If she is uttering something, then randomness will arise, you know. She is not uttering anything. So, no randomness will arise. If it, if it is a deterministic thing, then what is the probability of deterministic thing? 1. So, probability of 0, 0 would be what? A probability of that x is observing value 0 and multiplied with probability that uh, y is observing value 0 given x is observing value x is already observed value 0, 0 given 0. Okay. So, what is the probability of 0 given 0? It is 1. A probability of 0 is what? 1 by 3. So, it would be 1 by 3. There is no randomness. Are you getting meaning of this or not? If she is not uttering anything, why randomness will come here? That means 1 by 3 times 1. So, 1 by 3 and you can uh, further simplify to make determinant 16 by uh, 48 by multiplying both uh, denominator and uh, numerator with 60, 16 you will get it like. Now suppose uh, one question has been asked then either she will give 0 wrong answer or she will give 1 wrong answer. If she is giving 0 wrong answer, what is the probability of uh, 0 wrong answer? 3 by 4 and probability of 1 wrong answer 1 by 4. So, if you follow this branch the probability would be 12 by 48. This one is probability of what? 1 0. Uh, this one if you follow this branch then probability would be probability of 1 1. Probability of 1 1 would be uh, 14 by 48. Now, if two question has been asked then possibility I, 3 possibilities are there either 0 wrong answer or 1 wrong answer or 2 wrong answer. Okay. So, what is the probability of 2 comma 0 joint point? It is 9 by 48. Likewise, you can compute all these. Okay. So, this is the all possible 9 probabilities. Leaf, you are calling it, uh, these are the leaf. leaf. Okay. Leaf. And the ta final table is like this way. This is the final table. Now, why it is 0? That means, uh, what is the probability of, uh, if simply I am asking 0 question and 1 wrong answer. Is it feasible that you are asking 0 question from Professor May and Professor May is giving 1 wrong answer? Is it possible? Not. Simply she will, why she will, if you are not asking any question, why she will reply? answer. So, the, what is the probability of that? 0. 
प्रोटी ऑफ वन गिवन जीरो इज जीरो लाइक वाइज प्रोटी ऑफ टू गिवन जीरो इज जीरो लाइक वाइज प्रोटी ऑफ टू गिवन वन इज जीरो सो दिस अपर पार्ट इज जीरो एवरीवेर जीरो वाई यू हैव टू कंप्लीट ऑल पॉसिबल प्रोटी ऑल नाइन पॉइंट ऑल सो दैट देन यू विल कंप्लीट द ऑल जॉइंट प्रोटी मास फंक्शन वेल्यू ऑफ ऑल जॉइंट प्रोटी मास फंक्शन सो फॉर इच विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू इच जॉइंट पॉइंट ना यू हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड ना फ्रॉम हियर कैन वी गेट बैक प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स हाउ यूल गेट बैक प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स हाउ यूल गेट बैक प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स एक्स इज टेकिंग वैल्यू अलॉन्ग हॉरिजेंटल एक्सिस वाई इज टेकिंग वैल्यू अलॉन्ग वर्टिकल एक्सिस सो इफ यू डू परफॉर्म कॉलम सम यू विल गेट प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स एंड इफ यू डू परफॉर्म रो सम यू विल गेट प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ वाई सो फ्रॉम हियर योर टास्क इज टू कंप्लीट प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ वाई हियर कंप्लीटिंग प्रोटी मास फंक्शन वाई इज मच सिंपलर प्रोटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स इज ऑलरेडी गिवन सो दैट वुड बी नॉट an issue and that one is helping to compute joint protein mass function once you have already computed joint protein mass function you can compute protein mass function of y what would be that it would be uh, what is the property of y equal to 2 what is the property of y equal to 2 do uh, row sum this one 1 by 40, uh, 48 what is the property of uh, y equal to 1 10 by 48 this one is 1 by do row sum 1 by 48 the value of probability mass function at 2 what is the value of probability mass function at y equal to 1 it is 10 by 48 so once you have computed joint probability mass function easily you can compute uh, marginal probability mass function as well despite of that it is very difficult to compute it is not following any uh, existing a uh, standard form of probability distribution what we had already discussed and what is the probability mass function of this one what would be this one? sum it up sum it up what is sum it up 37 48 37 by 40 40 that y observed value zero is 37 by 48 so you have computed the probability mass function of y as well and initially if i am asking was from the question itself to compute probability mass function of y it will be very difficult task so first you, that's way it is very essential to follow the path of computation that once you are having observation of one random variable that means you know everything about that random variable that here uh, you know everything about x everything about x you know what is the distribution what are the value and also you know what are the value y is taking then also you know conditional probability of y given x then you are able to compute joint probability mass function of x and y then you are marginalizing in order to get probability mass function of y that is the way to compute okay now second application we will talk about law of total probability also you can say that it is marginalization as well law of total probability it is coming like this way so that means we are having a joint probability mass function x uh, x and y okay this one is already we have computed in the from first uh, application now what our intention is we want to compute probability mass function of x so same rule we will apply here so probability the p of x equal to what uh, probability that x is observed in value a small x and if you are denoting this one as an event a you can denote it so p of a i am converting in term of law of total probability p of a so how you will write it here p of a p of a intersection omega sample of space and come up with a partition of sample of space omega that bi is n number of bi so so simply it will be decompose into n number of n number of probabilities okay that a intersection b1 probability of a intersection b1 plus probability of a intersection b2 and then you will raise a question why we come up with bi is bi is coming from second random variable y and why 
why is a discrete random variable and i had mentioned that discrete random variable introduce partition in the sample space through inverse mapping that we have discussed so these are bi's are actually inverse map of uh, random number corresponding to a rand, uh, discrete random variable y that's why we got partition of sample space so we are taking partitioning of sample space with respect to second random variable y and we are computing probability mass function of first random variable x that is the approach so we will write it like this way further here what we will say that uh, we are here exhausting y so you also you can say that it is uh, we are taking all possible all possible inverse images of y so that's way uh, uh, probability that x is observed value of small x and y is observed value of uh, yk k varies from 1 to infinity i have left it here it depends upon how many number y is observing how many random number y is having it may have finite or infinite okay so i have intentionally i haven't not i have I have not given here. You can, uh, as per scenario, you can see that. So you can break it like this way, and finally you will get p of x. So it is one kind of marginalization. What I had discussed in the previous lecture, I had the same thing. I am saying again, it again and again. Similarly, you will uh, actually the marginalization is actually law of total probability. Marginalization, marginalization. It is what uh, actually it is just law of total probability. What in model one we had all this. Similarly, you will compute probability of y by exhausting x. from joint random variable uh, joint probability mass function x comma y p of x y x comma y you have to sum with respect to x you will get probability mass function of y now that one is was not difficult thing uh, second one uh, third one is really interesting this we call it bayes rule and it is coming everywhere and it is giving another framework of uh, inference you try to infer it a lot okay so we recall uh, from definition of conditional probability mass function that leads to computation of uh, joint probability mass function that means if you are observing x first and y later then joint probability mass function of x and y we write it probability mass function of x multiplied with uh, probability mass function of y given x okay what does it imply so we can uh, write it further uh, here probability mass function of y given x we will write it here Pro joint probability mass function of x and y and the joint probability mass function of x and y what is happening that uh, this one is what this probability is talking about probability mass function is talking about probability mass function of y from this scenario of x okay but in prior why we may have some kind of probability mass function no it may have some kind of probability mass function that's why we decompose uh, here probability mass function of x given y uh, through our prior belief we write it probability mass function of y times likelihood of observing x from this scenario of y that prior scenario prior, prior scenario prior scenario what we call it so pro, so here what we observe here is we observe this one is probability mass function of y this one is also probability mass mass function of y from the scenario of x so you see that this you call it prior probability mass function we call it prior probability mass or prior belief or initial belief what you generally you, we you to, use to take like uh, uh, someone is saying that this course is very difficult that might be prior belief or initial belief but if you are following rightly all principles then you will say that no prob probability of updated uh, updated probability of difficulty is smaller it is not like that so that that kind of changes so this one is prior belief we call it prior prior probability mass function or belief p of y it is prior uh, probability mass function at uh, this we call it posterior this one is posterior pmf once you have already seen x then you are talking about probability mass function of y so this one is posterior uh, pmf of x and no, sorry y posterior pmf
okay so further you will talk about what is then p of x p of x you will compute it through marginalization from given joint property mass function remember the joint property mass function is directly not given to you what prior distribution of y would be given to you and based on uh, prior distribution of y you will talk about likelihood of observing x likelihood of observing x so likelihood is not a probability mass function it is just probability likelihood is just a probability it is not a probability mass function when you are someone is saying probability mass function then probability mass function have to satisfy three properties what we have discussed three that uh, you know that what are those so likelihood so here the p of x we will compute it through uh, all possible scenario prior scenario of y so this one is one kind of summation summation component is coming so this also you can you can call it evidence from the prior belief try to collect evidence for x like try to collect evidence for x and this you i have told that uh, this one is evidence evidence for x from the prior belief you, your prior belief might be wrong or might be right if you are right then you are going in right direction if you are wrong then you are going in wrong, wrong direction so the same denominator term we call it evidence so from the prior belief of y we collect evidence for x and with respect to that we will compute a posterior uh, pmf of y we call it evidence you can note down if you are willing to note down see evidence so again similar thing is coming what i have discussed in module 1 and this you are saying that prior uh, probability mass function this we say that likelihood of observing x from the prior scenario of y likelihood of observing x there would be some kind of likelihood or likelihood is just a probability it is not a probability mass function or probability distribution it is just a probability likelihood concept would be very much common when you will go to study uh, machine learning everywhere likelihood term will come there so likelihood you have to understand in detail later likewise what is the probability mass fun uh, uh, if you talk about uh, the scenario that here you are observing y first and under the observation of y you try to update the probability of x okay so if you are willing to update the probability of x then you have to proceed with some kind of initial blip of x some kind so p of x is some kind of kind of initial blip or initial probability mass function of x and with respect to initial blip of x you have to talk about likelihood of observing that y what uh, with respect to that we try to update probability of x okay so this one is likelihood of y given x from the scenario of x initial you can better call it initial scenario of x and uh, divide by evidence of observing that y that uh, evidence of observing that y based on that we try to update the probability of x okay you can relate it all these from code drama as well so here p of x if you talk about this uh, this thing uh, this notation here p of x we call it uh, simply call it prior distribution of x then p of y given x we call it likelihood of observing y condition on x condition prior distribution of x okay so simply it is you will say that it is function of x why you may raise a question why because we have we are free to take any initial blip of x so if we are changing initial blip of x then likelihood will also change now likelihood of observing y will also change so as initial belief of x is changing likelihood of observing y from the initial belief of x is also changing so that's way likelihood of y from the initial scenario of x would be it is function of uh, x so simply we are writing it g of x it is function of x remember that it is function so g of x is not a probability mass function remember that it is just a probability it is just a probability various time in interview such questions are coming now the 
the last component this component p of y we call it evidence we call it and we compute it through law of total probability it is probability of observing the value y based on that we will update the value of x probability mass function of x okay that also we call it evidence so we'll do some exa uh, example here so two question one first question is talking about x is talking about number of ones that appears in a binary string of length l are you getting meaning of binary string that means there is a string that one is made from binary number binary number means 0 1 so there is a string which is made from 0 1 a 0 will come then 1 will come then 0 will come then 1 will come then 1 will come something like that okay i don't know all these are coming in random situation so there is a string which made from binary number so that a string we call it binary string if there is a, a string which is made from decimal number then we will call it decimal string so whatever number is coming that uh, we will give based on that number so in this uh, binary string we are counting number of ones that we denoted by random variable x and the length is also variable in nature length of the string is l we denote it by l so each bit in the string is equal to 0 or 1 0 with probability 1 by 2 or 1 with probability 1 by 2 equally likely very simple situation we have taken uh, unbiased situation we have taken 0 with probability 1 by 2 and 1 with probability 1 by 2 okay binary situation binary it, it, it is a binary trial each uh, uh, box is what binary trial each box is a binary trial so and bits are independent each box is independent for that okay so given a given length l what would be x length is given to us given length l what would be x x would be distributed in binomial framework why because x is counting number of success what is success here you can count uh, getting one is the success you are counting number of ones now getting one is the success you are counting number of one so uh, number of success and number of success say it k so k would be if you are taking a, a string of length uh, l then k would be less than equal to l that means you are performing l number of uh, bernoulli trial in l number of bernoulli trial how many success would be there it will start from 0 uh, 1 2 3 up to l so that means x will take value less than equal to a small l the given in under this given thing we are introducing this reasoning okay a question has not introduced so for given l x is having a binomial distribution so that means here what would be l choose k x is taking value k integral value so x l choose k uh, uh, 0.5 to the power k 0.5 1 minus 0.5 is again 0.5 to the power l minus k okay and if you simplify what does it took it took the form uh, l choose k 0 0.5 to the power l uh, this one is actually likelihood of observing uh, x likelihood of observing x so the likelihood is what likelihood that l is what we are having two variable here remember that here we, we are having two variable x counting number of ones in a binary string another variable is l joint variable Okay, both are varying, both are random variable. So, uh, we are taking a value of L from that scenario, a, a scenario of L. From that scenario, what we observe? It is just function of L. What is it? It is just function of L. It is not a probability mass function. Why? given l l will change here l is varying when it will be a probability mass function when l is fixed l is not changing here l is changing as per our initial belief as we are changing the uh, belief of l it will keep on changing so that's why it is not a probability mass function it is a just a likelihood of observing x from this given scenario of l 
uh, initial scenario of L. Okay. Now, the initial scenario of L I have given, I have mentioned here that L is observing value from 1 to 10. That means length of the string is either 1 or 2 or up to 10. And uniform manner. That means L is distributed uniformly. That means if L is taking value from 1 to 10, what, then what is the probability mass function? It is 1 by 10, uniform distribution. And if L is other than these 10 value, then probability is 0. That means simply uniform distribution. L is taking value from uniform distribution. Question is coming that we learn that binary string contains 4 ones, x equal to 4. You come to know that x, x is that a string is containing four ones that x equal to four. This one is you got the information. Now, how can we use this information to update the probability mass function of length of L? So, based on this one, you have to compute probability mass function of L given x equal to four. Simply, we will write it here. here why it will say this one is x equal to 4 so here you will put here the suffix l given x okay l given x so here we are having initial belief of l that one is uniformly distributed we have to find posterior distribution of l this one is initial distribution of x this one is posterior distribution of f we have to compute posterior distribution of x and that's where here Bayes rule will come here. So how many things we will compute here? How many things we need? Here we need initial bleep, initial distribution of L that we call it probability of L, probability mass function of L. Then from the initial bleep of L, what is the likelihood of observing X? Or what is the likelihood of observing 4? just x equal to 4 we have taken. What is the likelihood of observing x equal to 4? Under the initial belief of L, what is the likelihood of observing 4? x, here 4 is what? It is a value taken by x. So here, here in suffix x given L will come here. And divided by what is the evidence of observing 4? That means what is the probability of observing 4? So here P of 4. And the suffix x, 4 is observed by x now, so your suffix will come here, x. So we have to compute this one. So this one is thanks to Bayes rule. This one is the prior distribution, this one is the posterior distribution, and this one is the evidence. Okay, from the our in given information, this we will compute all this. Okay, so we have already seen uh, under the scenario of x equal to 4, what is the likelihood of observing uh, 4? Under the uniform law, what is the likelihood of observing? Uh, uh, likelihood of observing uh, under the given length L, what is the likelihood of, of observing 4? L choose 4, 0.5 to the power k. Uh, sorry, uh, here what you uh, 0.5 to the power 4 will come here, and 0.5 to the power L minus 4 will come here. And if you simplify, 4 and minus 4 will cancel out. You will just have this. So this one is the likelihood function, likelihood function and this one is the prior distribution of L. So we will compute evidence of 4, that means probability of observing 4, how? Uh, just uh, what you do, uh, axis, so take it like this way, along horizontal axis take L, uh, X, along vertical axis take L, okay, x equal to 4, so this is the line x equal to 4, x equal to 4. How many joint point you will observe along this line? 10 joint point you will observe, what are those? 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, like that, it will go like that, okay. So you have to exhaust L, so what, how you will exhaust? So, uh, for all, you are talking about all these points. So, take joint probability of 4, comma L and here exhaust L. So, here you do not know the explicit formula of this one. 
so here again you apply multiplication rule here you know the prior distribution of l that we have taken uni that uniform distribution so we will write probability of l into uh, probability of 4 given l conditional probability of 4 given l this also we know okay so just we have uh, computed it here so here what is p of l it is 1 by 10 1 by 10 is independent of l so it will come out of the summation and within the summation what we will have f of l or g of l also you can call it what is that l to 4.5 to the power l and this summation you can sum this summation and get the value okay so this one is what it is probability of observing 4 so finally what is the updated probability mass function of l or posterior probability mass function of l as per Bayes rule for initial uh, initial bleep or prior probability mass function of l times likelihood of observing 4 given this initial belief of l uh, divided by evidence and substitute everything here if l is other than 1 2 3 10 then this quantity would be 0 so that's where it is coming 0 it is very easy but if l is taking value from 1 2 3 up to 10 then what would be here p of l is 1 by 10 l choose 4 uh, into 0.5 to the power l divided by uh, probability observing 4 now tell me further can we simplify it further can we simplify can we simplify or not what if suppose l is equal to 1 what value this would be what would be this if l equal to 1 here once you are coming in this form there is no probability probability is already finished it is just uh, combinatorial or just uh, deterministic mathematics if l equal to 1 what would be this value tell me what would be this value what is 1 choose 4 can you choose 4 thing from 1 thing 0 l equal to 3 0 so if you are taking uh, l equal to 1 2 or 3 this value would be 0 ok this would again so this one is non zero only for what value 4 6 no 4 5 6 up to 10 so only this value uh, the posterior probability would be non zero ok posterior probability would be non zero and for other value it would be zero so that uh, you have computed posterior probability of it. second problem is coming there are uh, three different type of question which have different probability of uh, landing heads when toss ok so type first one is uh, type a coins which are fair that means probability of success is 0.5 probability of success is 0.5 getting head is the success type b coin are bent that means probability of success is not 0.5 it may be uh, 0.6 it is 0.6 third one is type c that one is also bent and probability of success is 0.9 three type of coin now suppose i have a drawer containing five coins two of type a 2 of type B, 1 of type C. I reach into the drawer and pick a coin at random. Without showing you the coin, I flip it at once and get heads. The question is, what is the probability that it is type A? What is the probability that it is type B? What is the probability that it is type C? So here you have to find updated or posterior probability. What is the prior probability? From anyone from the question? Can you say that what is the prior probability? What is the prior, prior probability? What is the prior probability? What? Getting? I am saying what is the prior probability here? What is the prior probability mass function? So prior probability mass function simply you will get from this information. 2 of type 2. 
that means how many coins in the drawer are there five coins so type 2 will have prior probability 2 by 5 type b will have prior probability 2 by 5 type c will have prior probability 1 by 5 that is the prior distribution three coins are there so that would be the prior distribution of the coins okay so here again i am calling let a b c be the event that uh, chosen coin of type a type b type c okay and d be the event that toss his head okay so the problem uh, ask us to find probability of a given d probability of b given d probability of c given d then you will raise a question what is the prior probability of a what is the prior probability of b what is the prior probability of c and that one is given in the question itself it is a prior it is given either it would be given in the question or you come up with the prior belief under some, some situation so so experiment is pick a coin from the drawer at random flip it and record the result and data is the result of our experiment result of our, our so this is the experiment now this is the experiment so in this case the event d it is talking about heads we think d as a data that provide evidence for or against each hypothesis and hypothesis is what is we are testing three hypotheses uh, type a coin type b coin and type c coin okay and prior distribution is what the probability of each hypothesis prior prior to tossing the coin that collected data what we have taken what are those uh, probability of uh, so there are five coin and in five coin two are of type a two are type b and one is type of c so prior probability of a is what 0.4 or 2 by 5 is what 0.4 and then prior to prior probability of b is also 2 by 5 that means 0.4 prior probability of c is 1 by 5 that means 0.2 that we got it it is already given from the experiment so next we will compute the posterior probability okay and also we have to compute likelihood likelihood of uh, likelihood of getting success from different types that one is also also given here what is the probability of d given a that probability of success in type A coin. Probability of D given A is 0.5. Probability of D given B is 0.6. In the question it is given. Uh, probability of D given C is 0.9. So all these are given. So this one is the likelihood what I am saying that. So you are having likelihood, you are having posterior probability. So easily you can compute evidence, probability of D. You can compute probability of D and finally it will give your posterior probability of A given the evidence given from the scenario of D. So probability of A given D is what? As per Bayes rule. Probability of B given D as per Bayes rule. Probability of C given D as per Bayes rule. So we have already computed all this. So first we compute probability of D by applying total law of total probability. Apply it here. Probability of A is given that prior probability. Uh, just apply here this, this one is marginalization or uh, uh, total probability law and simplify it is 0 0.62 if you simplify it is 0 0.62 and then you will compute uh, here diagrammatic view also you, again uh, you can see it here what is the uh, posterior probability of A from the scenario of D it is 0 0.33 what was the probability of A prior probability of A what was the prior probability of A 0.4, 2 by 5 is 0.4. The, like, similarly, you will compute posterior probability of B given D, 0.38. What is the prior, prior probability? 0.4. Now, uh, posterior probability of C given D is what? 0.29. What is the prior? 0.2. Prior was 0.2. So these are the updated probability. What we got it. So here Bayes rule is coming really interesting way and I have solved this one again in uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, by introducing uh, uh, random variable as well. So solution is same actually you can avoid all these. So uh, next in le next lecture we will discuss about uh, expectation. Expectation. So we have to talk about uh, motivation of expectation. Uh, what is meaning of uh, what 
what is uh, meaning of expectation? How, what you understand? If someone is uh, asking what uh, expectation, then what kind of uh, thinking process coming to you? What you understand from expectation? What is meaning of expectation? Don't know. You are uh, appearing in various tutorials. Okay. And uh, what do you expect? Then one question is coming that what you expect? There are various segments of uh, evolution in this course. What do you expect? Simply, I, what, is, what would be expected mark in your tutorials? Expect means one kind of representation of all those tutorial in which you have already appeared. There are various tutorial. So one tutorial is having different mark, another tutorial is having different mark, another tutorial is having different mark. Different different marks is coming. So if I am saying that, uh, asking, uh, what is your expected marks in tutorial? Then what you will come to know? No idea. It is expected means average, average of oh, why. What, then why expected means average? That means in mass, uh, in tutorial 1, you might have got uh, 5 out of 10. In tutorial 2, you might have got 6 out of 10. In tutorial 3, you might have got 4 out of 10. In tutorial uh, 4, you might have got uh, 7 out of 10. So all these numbers are varying around which number? The average number, 5. So average, expectation is one kind of average. Likewise, if you talk about the politicians, if you talk about MP or MLA, what is name of that? Name of what we call MP? MP is what? Another, what is the name, actual name of MP? Member of Parliament. But what we call in general? They are people representative. They are representing people from the area from where that MP has been elected or MLA means, uh, okay, member of legislative assembly. That means that person is representing the area from which uh, that person has been elected. That representation, it is talking, uh, that person is representing that area. What means? If by seeing MP, you can say that uh, from that area, a um, person will uh, speak what language MP is speaking, what food MP is eating, same food, similar kind of food, person from that area is, uh, person from that area might be eating. So actually MP is representing culture, food and various things from that area. So MP is one kind of average thing from or representation, average means representation of that area, that kind of thing we are talking about. So here in uh, random numbers, we have seen there are various random numbers and we do not know about uh, what uh, uh, certainty of those numbers, those occurs with different different probability. So what is the best representation of those numbers? Best representation is the average or expectation. We will find it here expectation. So, Another motivation you can call it. So we have seen the probability mass function. It is a complete description of a discrete random variable and it allows to determine probability of an event. Once the probability of an event is determined, however, the question of interpretation arises whether there is adequate rainfall in road island to sustain a farming endeavor or not. Just one scenario. So just you are going to record a rain kind of thing. And uh, this one is the rainfall, record of rainfall, what we call record of rainfall. Rainfall generally we measure in uh, inches, okay. So for a particle crop, we need a rainfall between 8 to 10 inch, like paddy or something like that, if you go for that. Then event uh, has probability, if you are uh, computing probability, then as per probability, you will say that it is taking value 0 0.527 and it can be computed like this way. The probability mass function is from the here by uh, frequency approach you can compute probability mass function. This is the probability mass function. You can compute it like that. But whether this uh, information is enough, this information is enough. 
it would be not enough this probability rather we might be better served by ascertaining the average rainfall since if you are saying say, saying that rainfall is between 8 to 12 8 to rainfall is uh, need rainfall uh, that a crop need need rainfall between 8 to 10 and you have just computed uh, rainfall of previous year you, you have recorded rainfall of previous year and just uh, uh, previous year it happens uh, around 8 inch okay before that 12 in something like that from there uh, it would be difficult so what are those those are average record we have to you try to convert all those numbers various number in a single number average record so if average rainfall is falling in this interval 8 to 10 then we will go for uh, farming of that particular crop otherwise not so apart from knowing the probability distribution of numbers probability distribution of numbers probability distribution of random numbers we need to know average thing in order to come up with better representation better so here average is very much important average we call it expectation expectation of uh, of a discrete random variable first we will call here so consider a discrete random variable x and we observe n random values of the discrete random variable x n n random values okay then the mean of n values would be what mean of a, n this n random value it will be approximately equal to expectation of the random variable x okay and we denote it by e of x when n is very large and the expectation is defined as like this way expectation is defined as a uh, weighted random values x is the values na no? x is the value of uh, random variable so this one is weight and weight is provided by the corresponding probability mass function so it is weighted sum what is expectation or average it is weighted same of we, sorry weighted sum of random values of a random variable weighted sum and the weight is provided by the corresponding probability of observing that random value or probability mass function simply here if you are de dealing with discrete uh, random variable so it is so expectation is weighted sum of random value uh, random value of the random variable and the weight is provided by corresponding probability mass function okay so we'll write it here that uh, x is fine uh, what is probability mass function it is probability of observing that x that a specific x okay okay so we are saying that it is actually approximately equal to that uh, what you do so here x may observe various value finite and infinite we are not uh, uh, aware of that it may observe finite or infinite so just observe first n values of x x i i varies from 1 to n so we are taking this value okay so how many so here under this scenario what is observing here each xi it we are not putting any probability law there uniform kind of thing if simply saying that i have given you 10 numbers then you will say that if no prior information is given there nothing is given there you will say that uh, those number are equally likely if 10 number what is the probability of observing 1 1 by 10 what is the probability of observing 2 1 by 10 like likewise if, if you are observing x uh, uh, n value of this x and p of x is not given to us then we say that probability of observing uh, x i is equal to 1 by n so that's where this one is average how we are computing average how we are computing average summing the number divided by n summing the number divided by n so similar thing is coming here so it is 1 by n and each one is uh, okay here x simply x i you will call it it is taken in different form i think just cancel all this your sum 
x2 by n and something like that. Okay, summing the summing the number that means x1 plus x2 so if no probability law is uh, mentioned there then what you do always we take uniform law uniform law plus x if you are taking this kind of thing this is the average definition you might have already seen you are having n number sum it up divide by total count okay now if you uh, bifurcate it uh, what would be this one it would be x1 divided by n plus x2 divided by n it will go on xn divided by n. So, what you observe, further how you will write it? You are writing it as x1 time probability of observing x1. What is the probability of observing x1? 1 by n. Because it will like, no probability law is clear to us. So, it will likely law we generally put it here. x1 time 1 by n that means this one is a weighted x and next would be x2 time probability of observing x2 that one is also 1 by n and it will come like that plus it will go like that plus x n time okay, 1 by n ok so in summarized form how you will write this one you will write it as sum of x i into 1 by n. I varies from 1 to n. Okay. And what is 1 by n? It is prob probability of observing xi. So, you will write it further like here. xi time probability of, of observing xi. Okay, this one you will observe. I varies from 1 to n. So, just we have taken n uh, reading of the random variable x, given random variable x. So, actually, this will converge to if you talk, you talk about all possible value of random variable, this will converge summation of x time probability of observing x. Probability of observing x same form it is taking okay and we are summing for all x and we are not here bound to put i equal to 1 to n we are not so as much as x is taking value so we will consider all those this term we call it expectation or average so what is average average is weighted sum of x the weight is provided by the corresponding probability mass function and we denote it by e of x e is taken from expectation word okay other thing we will cover in next class okay uh, further if you are having doubt you can ask